CGI just released a massive update for the Osmo Action 6. This is update 01020521. Compared to the previous update they released not that long ago, this is feature packed and we're going to get into exactly what they brought with this update in this video today. If you've watched my videos before on the Action 6, you'll know how in depth I go with some of these features and this video is no different. In this video today, I'm going to compare the 8K modes from both these cameras. Yes, I said it. Action 6 now has 8K within this camera. Not only are we going to do some comparisons between the 8K on these two cameras, we're going to look at the quality priority mode improvements. We're going to look at the one over one inch sensor capability now within the macro lens and so much more. Let's get into that right now. The Ace Pro 2 was one of the first cameras on the market in the action category landscape. Well, actually the first one that offered 8K. Now, DJI has an 8K action camera. Go to imagine that Insta360 is a little worried now that they're not able to brand theirs as being the only one on the market. Now, I've done quite a bit of tests with Ace Pro and their 8K mode, and I'm noticing that it's not all that great and you don't see all that much of a difference in resolution increases when using it. Do I think we're gonna see the same thing with this Action 6? Possibly. I think most of the benefit will lie within using that macro lens paired with the 8K mode based on the sharpness increases that you get already from using that macro lens. We're in 8K30 with the macro lens set to the mountain setting infinity at f4. This should be probably the highest quality you'll be able to get out of the macro lens. But now let's put on the standard lens because I'm sure a lot of you out there don't have that macro lens. Now that we're in 8K30 without the macro lens, is it rendering the image as sharply? It's also set to f4. This is potentially as sharp as it should get. I have a feeling that a lot of people aren't going to be seeing the benefits with this standard lens that's on now based on the fact that you are losing quite a bit of sharpness and clarity and contrast by using the standard lens. Right now, I've actually been working on a video comparing the Action 6 and the Ace Pro 2 photography modes. And the Action 6 had a photography mode that was really lacking a lot of features that the Ace Pro 2 has. But now finally in this update, they have introduced the ability to use film looks within the photography mode. So that is really a major plus. Without further ado, I'm gonna show you how some of these JPEGs look. And if you really wanna see a much more in-depth comparison, please wait for that Action 6 versus Ace Pro 2 comparison for photography. There's gonna be a lot more information in that review. I have the macro lens on now and it's set to F2 and we're in this one over one inch sensor mode in that 4K 30. That aspect ratio, we couldn't go in earlier, but now we are able to. Now, how does this look? Now, one trick I wanna share with everyone now, based on the fact that you can use focus peaking within the camera, only on the back screen, unfortunately. Although you have to keep in mind that the front screen on this camera is quite lousy and I really would like to see the design in the future like the Ace Pro 2 with much more clarity and a flip up capability. But for now, we have the back screen and our phone to do the focus speaking. And one thing you can do is turn the camera over. Now, you can use your hand and see exactly how in focus your hand is. This is around 15 millimeters, so almost everything should be in focus, honestly. I have it set a little bit past the human setting, two clicks past, and it shows my hand being red in focus. Now, when I move the camera over to my hand where I was at that time before, you'll know that everything is in focus then. I'm really curious, based on this update, how many of you who originally said that they'd be passing on this macro lens have decided to now purchase the macro lens. It makes for actually a pretty interesting purchase 
with the addition of these new settings that allows you to get into. Now, there are some downsides and you are still limited in some things. For example, you can't use the one over one inch sensor mode in 8K, you're stuck in that 4K. And you also don't get focus peaking when you're in D log M, which is really unfortunate because that is probably my favorite mode to shoot in. So not having that is pretty unfortunate, but I think you can get by by using the Mimo app if you need to. But over time, you should be able to better understand how far you're supposed to be based on the focus adjustments on the lens. I'm having a bit of trouble right now trying to remember whether or not we we're able to use the film tone modes while using this macro lens. I have a feeling we weren't able to, but now you are able to use the film tone modes, just not in 8K. So you can still use that one over one inch sensor mode in 4K and use the film tones on the macro lens, which is pretty cool. One thing a lot of people didn't really like in the one over one inch sensor mode was that grid that was on either side. It seems as though they've removed it. Now let's switch that on the camera, I guess I'm gonna have to turn it off and let's see if there are any improvements in this one over one inch sensor mode using the macro lens, 4K 30, let's go. All right, now I've double pressed that in order to take that off. And that was the mode that left massive black boxes in the side here. And a lot of people were pretty frustrated by them and it required you go into your editor app and zoom in in order to get the footage that you wanted. But it seems as though they've completely eliminated that. Looking at the display panel now, you get a lot of that height, but it's really not all that wide compared to say this Ace Pro 2 that I have here that is also mounted on this. Looking at this footage right now, do you think they've sort of handicapped the sensor by doing this? Let me know. One of the new features that was actually added in this update was a boost to the quality priority setting within the normal mode. I have it off right now, but let's turn it on and see if this improves this at all. I have this image quality priority mode turned on. I'm at F4 as well on the macro lens. So if I should be seeing any performance boost, this is helping it and assisting it as much as I possibly could. Is there any difference now looking at this? I'm gonna do a little bit of a vlog test while walking with this quality priority mode on. And then we're gonna turn it off and I wanna see at all if you can really tell any difference between the two. I'm gonna turn it off now. I never really use normal mode all that much. So I haven't dug all that deeply into what exactly the quality priority mode offered, but I'm really curious what sort of improvements there are. One thing you should keep in mind when using this quality priority, you cannot use the film looks like I'm using right now. Currently I switched over to the NV film look, but it does not give me the option to use this and the quality priority at the same time. So I'm using this right now, 8K 30 with Rocksteady on with the macro lens. And I've just experienced my first freeze with the Action 6. So <laughs> they have the bug fixes in with this update but it looks like they're gonna need to add a few more because this is freezing a little bit. And I haven't really been using 8K all that much throughout the day, and I haven't used it within the last 30 minutes. So the fact that I just had a freeze on the 8K when I started back up again is not necessarily a good sign, but I think this could be a pretty easy fix. The next smaller thing that they've added with this is now gesture control when doing live streaming and webcamming. This is not necessarily what I would consider the best um, webcam sort of device based on how wide it is. I prefer a bit more narrow of a perspective, but for people that are using it, now you have gesture options available. The next feature they added was ability to upload to cloud. And that is things like uh, NAS's uh, Google Drive, things like that. So if you have a lot of data and you want to upload it to the cloud, you can do so now with the Action 6. I'm sure a lot of people looking to buy this camera are going to want to use it for vlogs sort of environments. So how exactly does this look in 8K? Should switch this off and switch it over to the 4K 30 in comparison and just see how exactly this looks without the macro lens. Now I'm in 4K 30. I haven't used the macro lens for either of these comparisons. I'm really curious if we do benefit 
all that much by switching over to 8K or are we just using up a lot of memory space for next to no reason? Seems like that's kind of the case with the Insta360 Ace Pro 2. Seems like it's kind of a feature that they can add on the box so more people buy it. When in reality, most people don't have 8K screens. I sure as hell don't. On my MacBook Pro, I have 4K Max, and I think a lot of people out there only have 4K television. Some people are even using 1080. One thing we should definitely look at is exactly how well the 2X mode works in this 8K. You have to still turn off the device in order to use the 2X mode, but let's do that right now. Okay, we're in that 2X mode now in 8K. Really curious how this looks. For the Insta360 Ace Pro 2, I wasn't really all that impressed with the quality. But if this does look half decent, then you could really have something here. I have it now at 8K30 in 1X in F4 to try and increase some of the sharpness a little bit. Now let's switch it over to that 2X mode and see. Looking at the small, lousy screen on the back, it seems like there's a massive hit in resolution, if I'm being honest. Looking at the comparisons over the last bit, what did you think about the Osmo Action 6? How did it do and how did it compare against the Ace Pro 2? You have to admire DJI for offering a pretty major update like this so soon into the release, not even labeling it version 2. So I can only imagine what we're going to see on something like a version 2 update. Going back to the AK mode on the Action 6, it leaves me kind of feeling a few different ways. First, I think think when you're using that paired with the standard lens, I don't think you're really going to see the sort of sharpness and clarity that you're going to want and you're sort of magnifying in an already soft image. But with the use of something like this macro lens, I really think you'll have something special when you are shooting in F4 with the macro lens. Well, that was about all that I had to say today. All in all, I'm really happy that DJI is listening and adding in a lot of things that people were hoping for originally. Let me know what was missed potentially that they have overlooked and what you would hope to have added in a firmware update in the near future. Because this is DJI's flagship action camera, I really expect them to do a lot more updates in the near future. If you appreciated this video, please come back again once more and subscribe. It really means a lot your support is greatly appreciated. I have memberships now available on this channel. I would greatly appreciate if you became a member. That would be awesome. And also affiliate links if you want to buy anything mentioned today. That is all. Thank you so much. Take care. I'll see you on the next one. Bye.